Hello, pupils. How are you? Hope you are all fine and healthy. Yes. It is another session of our virtual class. And I hope you've been enjoying our previous session. Good. Do not forget that I've always told us that we should keep ourselves safe and healthy. Yes, we can do this by what? By washing our hands regularly with soap and water. Good. Now, before we move to our discussion for today on that civic education, we are going to quickly look into what we did last time. Now, last time we discussed on how we can take care of our bodies and also, now how can we take care of our body? And why do we need to take care of our body in the first place? I told us that we need to take care of our body to save us from what? From germs and disease. And one of the ways by which we can take care of our body, which we discussed in our last class, was that we should what? We should take our bath regularly. How many times daily? Twice daily. Now, we should take our bath twice daily in the morning and before going to bed in the night. Also, brushing of our teeth. How many times did I tell us we should brush our teeth in a day? I actually told us that we should brush our teeth twice daily. Is that also good? That is after meal in the morning, that's after our breakfast, and before going to bed in the night, likewise. Is that taking good? Today, we'll be treating a very new topic and a very, very, very interesting one for that matter on that civic education. The topic says road usage. But before we go into the topic, please let's quickly look at our lessons objective. Now, under the objective, we have at the end of the lesson, the pupils should be able to, one, that is A, write briefly on traffic regulations. B, explain the different traffic regulations we have. Third one says, state reasons why we should obey traffic regulations. The fourth one says, define road signs. The last but not the least says, list and explain some of the road signs we have. Now, during the course of this lesson, we're going to be doing justice to what traffic regulation is all about and the different traffic regulations we have. Also, reasons why we need to obey the different traffic regulations we have. Now, the first on our agenda for this session is to define traffic regulation. What are traffic regulations? What do we mean by traffic regulations? Now, according to what we have on our screen, it says traffic regulations are the rules which guide the, you, the road users. That is, traffic regulations are the rules which guide the road users. These rules are made by government and everyone using the road is expected to obey them. Now, from the look of things now, traffic regulations refers to those things that have been set aside for us not to do if you are a road user. That is, as anyone, anybody, who is planning on using the road? There are some things that you must not do whenever you plan on using the road. And these are the things we know as what well, as the traffic regulations. So if at all you must use the road, there are some rules and regulations that guide this road usage. Is that taken up? Good. Now, these rules are made by what? By government. That is, it is the government that lay down these rules. And these rules must be followed to the latter. Is that taken out? Now, and everyone using this road is expected to obey them. So if at all you plan on using the road, you must obey this regulation. Is that taken? You must obey these what? Regulations. Is that taken? Good. Now, traffic regulation in the North Shell refers to the rules and regulations that guide every road user. So anyone who is using the road, the rules and regulations that guide them on how to use the road is what we refer to as what? As traffic regulations. Is that taken? Good. Now, let's move to the different traffic regulations we have. What are the different traffic regulations we have? What are these, those rules and regulations that have been put in place to guide us whenever we plan on using the road? One of them is obeying traffic lights, obeying traffic lights. 
This refers to obedience to what to traffic light. Whenever you see the traffic light, you have to obey it. Is that taken? From the diagram you have on the screen, you have a diagram showing red, yellow, and green. Is that also? This red you are seeing, which is the first one, implies stop. It means what? Stop. Whenever you see the red light on the road, whether you are driving or you are in a car that your parents are driving or your brother or anyone is driving you, whenever you see that red sign, bam, it means you should what? You should stop. Is that taken? Good. Now, the yellow sign, which is the second one, the yellow means what? It means ready. That is, after you must have stopped the vehicle for some minutes or for some seconds. Now, when you are about to move, the yellow sign or the yellow light comes up, telling you to get what? To get ready. Is that again? Good. The next light we see after the yellow light is what? Is the green light. And which is what? Which means go. The green light means what? Go. It indicates that every car that I've stopped initially should start what? Should start moving. Is that taken? Good. So the traffic light has what? Three main lights. The first one is what? The red light. The second one is what? The yellow light. And the last but not the least is what? Is the green light. The red is telling you to stop. That is for a moving vehicle must what? Must stop. Now, the second one, which is the yellow light, is telling you to what? To get ready to move. Is that taking now? To what? To be ready to what? To move. Now, the last but not the least is the green light. The green light means what? Go ahead. That is, you should start moving. Is that taken? Good. Now, that's the first under the traffic regulation. Now, we have the second one to be using zebra crossing or overhead bridges when crossing major roads. Now, I want to clear us, please, whenever you are about crossing major roads, as a kid or as an adult, even if you are with your parents or with your uncle, now, or your aunt, now, you must know how to make proper use of the major roads. You don't cross the major roads anyhow. Why? Because vehicles are always on a very high speed. Is that taken out? So, to avoid being knocked down, by any of this vehicle, you must either use the zebra crossing, just like what you have on the screen here. Can you see a diagram of one mother, a woman holding her son? Why they were using the zebra crossing? Yes, that is an example of zebra crossing. We have it on our major roads. So whenever you want to cross any major roads, you locate this zebra crossing. Is that taken? You don't just cross any hour to avoid any car knocking you down. Is that taken? So whenever you have to cross the major road, you locate this zebra crossing and move. Because when cars get to this zebra crossing, it is very, very compulsory. It is mandatory for them to want to stop. And why must they stop? They must stop for you to want to cross. Because they are aware that you are using what the zebra crossing. Now, the second one, the second alternative is the overhead bridge, which is the most important one. It is the safest of all this. Now, the overhead bridge is the one you have in your diagram. That is a kind of small bridge made for pedestrians. Who are the pedestrians? You are the pedestrian. It is meant for you to use in crossing over to the other side. Is that taken? Instead of using the zebra crossing, you can as well use what? the overhead bridge, which is the safest. Is that taken out? This one is the safest means of crossing the major road. Is that taken? So whenever you are about crossing any major road, please locate either a zebra crossing or preferably locate what? An overhead bridge. Is that taken? Would you have this one, this type of overhead bridge in K2? Yeah. When, when you get to that room, in case you, you have this overhead bridge, they are always covered. Some of them are not covered, by the way, but most of them are covered. They have shade. Is that taken? Please avoid the temptation of having to cross major roads without seeing a zebra crossing or overhead bridge. Is that taken? Please use either zebra crossing or overhead bridge whenever it is 
purpose in for you to work to cross major roads. Do not cross major roads without using any of these two. Thank you. Now let's go to the next one. The next one is obeying road signs. Obeying road signs. This is for a driver. As a driver, if you are driving a vehicle, probably you find yourself in a car or in a bus. Your dad, anyone is driving you, and you see a sign like children crossing. It indicates that you have to what slow down. You have to what slow down because the people that are crossing are kids. They are what they are kids. So you have to what slow down for them to cross to the other side. You don't go on a high speed. If not, you knock them down. Is that taken now? So you don't want to knock anybody down or to kill anyone. You have to slow down whenever you see the sign. Slow children crossing, like the one you have here. It is indicating there that some children are crossing that you have to what slow down. The second sign is slow down, bump ahead. Yes, it is a caution. You can see it on it. Caution, speed bumps ahead. So this indicates that there is a bump ahead. And when there is a bump ahead, you have to what slow down. You cannot climb that bump without slowing down. If not, you are causing danger. You are bringing danger upon yourself. Is that taken out? Please, whenever you see any sign telling you to slow down, like speed bumps ahead, bumps are like obstacles on the road. Place there to what to checkmate your speed. That is to to ensure that you do not go on over speeding. Is that taken out? Good. So the essence of this bump is to what is to limit your speed. As a result, whenever you see any sign telling you that there is a speed bump ahead, please adhere to this one by what by slowing down. The last there on diagram is what is a sharp bend. That's what we call sharp bend. Sharp bend. Is that taking a sharp bend? You can see this arrow indicating that what there is a sharp bend to your left. There is a sharp bend what to the left. So as a result, you have to what, slow down. If not, you go into the forest. You leave the road and go into the forest because you cannot go through a sharp bend on over speeding. Is that taking out? You have to lower the speed before you can take the turn to your right. Please take note of all these signs. Good. The next one is obeying speed limit. Obedience to speed limit. Why must you obey speed limit? You have to obey speed limit. Anytime you see a sign like this on the road, speed limit 65, what does it imply? What this implies is that you must not move beyond 65 km per hour. Is that taken out? You must not move beyond 65 km per hour because don't forget that speed are measured in what? In kilometer. Good. So you must not move beyond what? 65 km per hour. Now, the second one is 15. This 15, whenever you see this sign on the road and you see any figure written inside like 15, it means you must not move beyond what? Just like the 65 we have earlier on. You must not move beyond 15 km per hour. Now, the last but not the least says you must not move beyond 100 km per hour. Is that taken out? Good. So whenever you are using the road, always ensure that you do not move ahead of the recommended speed. Is that taken? So anytime you are in a car, anyone is driving you, and you are looking at the speed at which the person is moving, please raise alarm by telling the driver, anyone who is driving you, to what to lower his or her speed. Is that taken? It is not for anything but for what? For your life. For you to guide your life, you have to what raise alarm and warn the person against overspeeding. Is that taken? Good. Now, the fifth one says vehicles must carry fire extinguisher. Vehicles must carry fire extinguisher and spare tires. What is the essence of carrying fire extinguishers and spare tires? Good. Now, look at the diagram we have here. This is a diagram of somebody keeping 
is your fire extinguisher right under the driver's seat. Have you seen that now? Can you see that? Good. Now, the essence of this fire extinguisher is to what? Look at the second diagram. Is to kick against what? Fire disaster. In the case of fire incidents, probably fire came upon the car. The next thing to do is to what? Is to use the fire extinguisher to put up what? The light. Can you see what the man is doing in the diagram? The man is trying to what? Put up the light using what? The fire extinguisher. Let's imagine or assume that the man is not with the fire extinguisher in the car. What would have happened to that car? The car will what? We become reckless. It will turn to what? To ashes. Why? Because the man fails to what? To go with fire extinguisher. So it is very, very important. Whenever you are about traveling, whether in your parents' car or in a commercial car, Ensure the car you are traveling in has what? Fire extinguisher. If not, get down a light from that car or bus. Is that again? It is very, very important that every car or every car that is moving must have what? A fire extinguisher. Is that again? Now, another one is spare tire. Spare tire. Look at the diagram here. That's a diagram of a car with its spare tire right behind the car. Have you seen that now? That is the spare tire covered in leather. Now, the essence of this spare tire, why? Why, do we need, why do we need spare tires? We need spare tire in the scenario whereby the tire you are using got flattened. That is, if you have a flat tire, the next thing is to bring out the spare Imagine you are traveling on a very, very long distance, or you are at a spot where you cannot get help nearby. Now, you now suddenly have a flat tire. What will you do if you don't have a spare tire? It means that you will have to want to sleep there or wait there for hours waiting for help because so you might be so unlucky that that very spot where the car got flattened or where the tire got flattened. There's no network. So you cannot even communicate with people who are outside who can come to your rescue. So it is very, very important that you always go along with at least one spare tire. Is that taken? And ensure that that spare tire is functioning. That is, it, it, the spare tire is in good health. Is that taken now? You don't go with a damaged tire saying you have a spare tire. It is not right. Is that taken now? So it is very, very important that your vehicle has, number one, a fire extinguisher, and the second one is what? Spare tire. Is that taken? Good. Now, I will discuss the traffic regulations and some of the traffic regulations we have. Now, we'll be moving to the reasons why we should obey traffic regulations. Why? All these things I've mentioned earlier on. Why do we need to abide by them? Why do we need to do all these things? The first one says to prevent confusion that may occur on the road. Yes. Why? To prevent what? Confusion that may occur on the road. Now, if you obey the traffic regulations that has been laid down by the government, you will prevent what? Confusion on the road. Look at this diagram here. This is a diagram of probably a little accident or rough driving. And you can see, as a result, cars are on a standstill. No bus is moving, causing traffic. That is the essence of us following traffic regulation. Because if you fail to obey traffic regulation, this is what will happen. There will be accident. There will be blockage. People will start shouting on each other. There will be fights everywhere and there. Look at these ones. These ones are praying on the main road, a road that is meant for vehicles, for cars to move. These ones are praying on that same road. Is it right for you to be praying on the, on the main road? No, it is very dangerous and risky. Imagine if there is a kind of accident. What will happen to these ones who are there? 
I'm not saying it is bad for us to pray. For you want to pray, you go to the to the monks or to the shops to pray. You don't stay on the main road, on the road meant, meant for vehicles to move, to start praying. That is not an example of a good road usage. You are not using the road correctly by praying on the road. No, that's not what the road is meant for. The road is meant for the free flow of water of vehicles, the free movement of water of vehicles, not for people to sit, to sit or kneel to be praying. Is that taken? Good. Another thing that traffic regulation prevents, or why we should what obey traffic regulations, is to check over speeding. Yes, is to what to check over speeding. Don't forget that over speeding kills. Yes, that is the danger attached to over speeding. When you over speed, it kills. So as a result, please ensure that the vehicle or the bus you are in. Just like I told you earlier on, it's not what is not over speeding. Whenever you see a sign, you look to the front of the driver's seat, right close to the steering. You see something like this. This is what we call the speedometer. It is what reads the, the level or the speed at which the vehicle is moving. So whenever you look into this speedometer and you notice that this red, long red hand is almost on 180. Please, that is close to death. That is what close to what death. You raise alarm by shouting on the driver to please stop that you want to get down. If anyone is driving you, but whether your daddy, your parents, your mom, your uncle, your sister, if anyone is driving and you are seeing this meter reading 180, even 100 or above 100, please raise alarm and tell the person to please stop the car. Is that taking because over speeding kills? The result of over speeding is what is death. It is not good. Another one is this is a bomb. And what is it of this bomb? This bomb is what is to lower the speed of vehicle. That is the essence of having this bomb. You have this bomb everywhere, even on our street here, even in Yakubu Street. You have this bomb. Is that also the essence of this bomb is to what is to ensure that cars are not moving too fast to checkmate over speeding to ensure that cars are moving slowly is that taken good now on the essence why we need to obey traffic regulation is to prevent accident on our roads is to what prevent accident on our road can you see what is in the diagram here the first diagram this is a, a diagram of a car that was involved in a very fatal accident. Can you see? Can you see the car? I'm very sure that the driver and the passengers in this car, they are likely not to be alive. And even if they are alive, they will be in a very critical condition in the hospital. Is that not so? Good. So if you want to avoid a scene like this, if you want to avoid an accident like this, please obey the traffic what regulation. Is that taken? So see another one. A child or a kid driving bicycle on the main road. Is it good for you to be driving bicycle on the road, on a major road? No. And can you see the result of doing that? The result is accident. Accident. Can you see the small boy? The small boy is on the floor. And it's out. Or get one for that matter. So please, even if you have bicycle at home, when you are driving your bicycle, drive your bicycle within your house within your compound. Do not take your bicycle to the major roads to start driving. It is very, very dangerous and risky to your life. Is that taken? Can you see another one? This is accident caused by probably overspeeding. Yes, overspeeding. Can you see? Leaving the road to go and eat the pole. Can you see that? Eating the side of the road due to overspeeding. It is not good. It kills. It causes accident. Please prevent all this by adhering to what? To the rules and regulation of the traffic regulation. Is that taken on? The next one is what? To avoid damages to lives and properties that could result from accidents. Yes. Earlier on, we said 
if you don't obey traffic regulation, there is likely to what to be accident. And where there is when there is accident, what happens? What is the outcome of accident? What is the result of accident? The outcome of accident is what is damages to lives and what and properties. Damages to what to life and properties. Can you see the man here? The man is being taken what to the hospital on an emergency base. Is that also? Yes, that is a man involved in an accident and is being taken to the hospital. That is damage to our lives. If we don't obey the traffic regulations, there will be damage to what to lives. Please, if you want to avoid this, if you want to avoid being taken to hospital on an emergency basis, please do not do not go against the rules and regulation of traffic regulation. Is that taken now? Good. Can you see the diagram of a car? This diagram shows a car going inside the house to destroy what? The house. Can you see now? The house has been destroyed already. That's what we call destruction or damages to properties. The house has been damaged. Why? How? Because of failure to obey the what? The rules and regulations of road usage. Are you seeing that now? So, as a road user, we must obey what? The traffic regulations to avoid all of this sin. Is that taken? Good. Another one is what? To enable us to get to our destination in good time. To enable us what? Get to our destination in good time. How do you feel when you leave your house every morning? When your mom takes you from your house every morning to your school safely and come back in the evening or in the afternoon to take you back home safely? You feel happy, like what you are seeing in the diagram. The girl is happy. Why? Because she has gotten to school safely. Is that taking now? So when you obey the rules and regulations, the traffic regulations, you what you get your destination in good time. You get your destination what in good time. Is that taking good? The last but not the least is what is to allow for a smooth flow of vehicles. That is, if you obey traffic regulations, there will be free flow of vehicles. Can you see now in the diagram? Can you see how vehicles are moving freely without any hindrances? Are you seeing that? Good. I want you to note that all this traffic you see on our major roads in Lagos are as a result of failure to obey traffic regulation. Yes. It's those traffic you are always seeing or hearing about every day is either caused by accident, which is caused by over speeding, or bus, commercial bus standing there by the roadside to take passengers, which is not in line with what with the rules and regulation set for what for road users. These are some of the things that cause for our vehicles or for our cars not to be moving flow. flow So now, if you want to have free flow of vehicles on your road, you must what you must obey the rules and regulations set aside for road users. Is that taken now? So obey traffic regulations so that you have the what a free and smooth flow of vehicles. Is that taken now? Good. Now let's move to some important road signs. Having this course the traffic regulations, some of the traffic regulations, and reasons why we must obey traffic regulations. Now, we want to move into some important road signs. Yes, as a road user, I want to know that, I want to believe that you must be coming across um, so many road signs every now and then. And you might be wondering, what is the meaning of this road sign? What does this sign mean? Now, we are going to be going through one or two of them. Is that taken now? First and foremost, what is road sign? What do we mean by road sign? Now, road signs are those signs 
we find on our road that gives us direction anytime we are using the road. Therefore, they must be known and understood by road users. Again, road signs uh, are those signs we find on our road that gives us direction anytime we are using the road. What this implies is that the essence of these road signs is to give us direction. They give us what? Direction. They indicate what and what we should do whenever we are using what? The road. Is that taken out? That's what we know as what? As road signs. So road signs are those signs we find on our road that gives us direction. That is what to do whenever we are what? We are using the road. It is as simple as ABC. They tell us what to do whenever we are on the road. They give us direction whenever we are on the road. Now, some of these road signs are, some of these road signs are number one, T-junction. Yes, you must have been hearing T-junction, T-junction. What does it mean by T-junction? See, T-junction is virtually almost everywhere. Yes, this sign, this is where a road joins another road, forming a letter like T. This is a sign showing that there is a road that joins to another road, forming a letter like T. Like the one we have in this diagram. Can you see this road? See, when you get to this point, you can see that the road is going to the right and likewise to the left. That is in form of T. Don't forget that they are coming from this angle. Just the for instance, the one we have at Yakubu there, the road in Yakubu Street. Now, if you are moving out of the school, you get to that junction. When you get to that junction, you see that there's a road going to your right, which is one going to the express. And there's one other one going towards to the left, which is one going to Aladi Dollar. So that is what we know as what as T junction. That is, it, the road is in form of letter T. Can you see that now? Capital letter T. That is the sign. So whenever you come across this sign on the road, whenever you are in a car using the road and you come across this sign, it indicates that there is a road ahead joining to another road, forming a letter like what? Like T. Is that taken? Good. Now, the second one is the sign we know as what well as stop, the stop sign. This sign shows that a moving vehicle should what should stop. So whenever there's a moving vehicle and you come across this sign, most often traffic regulators normally would hold these signs in their hand, raising it up to tell vehicles that are moving to what to stop. So whenever you see the sign either being raised up or put somewhere indicating stop, indicating the sign you have in this diagram, it means what you should stop. You should what you should stop. Good. Another one is bend sign. Bend sign. This shows that there is a bend ahead and the driver should slow down. This bend sign is showing that the road is not straight. That is, there is a bend ahead. When we talk of bend, we mean a corner. Is that a kind of a sharp corner? A sharp corner ahead. Now, the first one is indicating that there is a sharp corner to the what to the right. So the vehicle should, should slow down. The second one is showing that there is a sharp corner to the left. So what the vehicle should, what, should likewise slow down. So whenever you see a sign like this on your road, on your major road, it means what you should slow down. Please take note of this. When you see a sign like this, please slow down. Failure to, to slow down leads to what? To accident. Might lead to what? To accident. So if you want to avoid accident, please, whenever you come across a sign like this on your road, please slow down. It is very, very, very important for you to take note of, look, note of this. Is that taken now? Please take note of this. It is very, very important.
Another one is hospitals and schools. Hospitals and schools. They are sign which shows hospitals and schools. Now, whenever you are on the road, you are using the road, and you see a sign like this, school zone. What does that imply? The sign is telling you that there is a school within that place. And as a result, you must slow down. And why must you slow down? It means that a kid, a pupil, a student might be crossing what the road. So it is very dangerous to go at a very high speed when you are seeing a sign like this, school zone. Because when you know that there is a school within that vicinity, it implies that what you must slow down because kids can run and come out of any angle. And if you don't want to be involved in any form of accident, if you don't want to knock down anybody, please, you must slow down when you see a what? A sign like this. Likewise, the hospital sign. When you see this sign, it indicates that there's an hospital within that place. An emergency can come in at any time. So as a result, when you approach a sign like this, whether school zone, whether this cross sign that indicates hospital, please slow down. Please slow down. Is that again? Good. Now, in summary of all what we've been discussing since, they said that all road, all road users must assume they are the only same person. They are the only same person on the road. And as such, must be extra careful when using the road. Again, all road users must assume they are the only same person on the road. And as such, must be extra careful when using the road. This has been my watchword for a long time. And it is something I used to dwell on whenever I'm using the road. So I want you also to inculcate this lifestyle. Whenever you are using the road, either as a driver or somebody using legs, please, you have to assume that you are the only one who is not insane on that road. You have to assume that every other person using the road with you, as of that moment you are using the road, are all insane. And why do you have to think that way? You have to think that way because anything can happen at any point in time. You cannot assume that this person must act equally as you are acting or the same way you are acting. If you are a driver and you are driving your car, you cannot always assume that anybody who is driving the car alongside you on that road are all thinking like you. And as a result, you have to be expecting anything at any point in time. And if you don't want to be involved in any form of accident, there are people who are in their car driving after they've taken alcohol, they've taken hard drugs, and before you knew it, if you are moving too fast, if you are not careful with your way of driving, they come and eat you. Even though you are not the one at fault, they eat you, and who is to blame? So you might blame the person, but who is to see the pain? You people want to take the pain because the pain will stay with you. So you have to avoid involving yourself in any form of unnecessary accident, please ensure that you drive or use the road carefully. You have to be extra careful when you use the road. Is that taken? Good. Now, let's quickly look at the evaluation, which is, which is corresponding with our objectives because it is with this evaluation that we can ascertain whether the objective of this lesson has been achieved or not. Now, the first on the evaluation says, what are traffic regulations? Yes, what are traffic regulations? I told us what traffic regulations are all about. Is that also, I told us during the course of this lesson that traffic regulations are what? Are those rules and regulations that guide you as a road user. Is that taken up? So the first thing you have that, that should come to your mind whenever you see the word traffic regulation is what is rules and regulations that guides you as a, what, as a road user. Now, the second one says, list and explain three traffic regulations we have. Now, 
We have so many traffic regulations. Is that not so? Good. So you have just mentioned three of those traffic regulations. Is that taken now? Good. Now, the third one says what? Give three reasons why we should obey traffic regulation. Why must you obey the traffic regulations? Why must you obey traffic regulations? Why must you obey the road signs? Why must you slow down? Why must you use the overhead or pedestrian bridge or the zebra crossing? Why must you do all these things? We've done all that during the course of our lesson to avoid accident, right? To save lives and property. And also to get to our destination in good time. To avoid what? Traffic. To avoid so many things. Is that also? So just mention three of these reasons for me. Is that taking up? The fourth one says define road signs. I told us during the course of our lesson that road signs are those signs that what? That gives us directions. That gives us what? Directions. Road signs are those signs that gives us what? Directions on the road. As a road user, you are receiving direction from the road signs. When to stop, when to move, when to, when to, when to slow down, when there's a bomb, bomb ahead, when to do so many things on the road. They are being, these instructions are being given by what? By road signs. Is that taken? Good. Another one is what? Is state with explanation three of the road signs we have. What are those road signs we have? Discuss that. T junction, is that also? The hospital and school signs, the bench sign. We have so many of them. We have so many signs on our road. So now you mention three of them and explain them. Is that taking up? Good. I hope by now you've learned one or two things on how to what to make proper use of our roads. You do not use the old road anyhow. It is very, very dangerous as a kid to be careless with the usage of what of the road. Whenever you need to use the road, please locate a zebra crossing. Whenever you want to move to the other side, locate a zebra crossing or what? Or an overhead head bridge, please. Do not cross the major road anyhow to avoid accidents. Please do not overspeed. If you are in a car, your parents are driving you and they are going so fast, do not be happy because I know some of you are always fond of a very fast car. When the car is moving so fast, you'll be happy. You'll be telling you, you will be encouraging your parents, your dad, that move faster, move faster, overtake that car. It is very, very dangerous. If you have been doing that before, please stop now. Do not encourage the driver to continue with overspeeding. It is dangerous to your life. To avoid any form of accident, please, as you have seen in the different diagrams I've shown to you, it cause damage to our lives and to our property. So if you don't want any damage to your life or to properties, please ensure that you obey the traffic regulation. Is that taken? I know we all love ourselves. We love our very beautiful body. So we do not want anything to tamper with that beautiful body of ours. So if you don't want anything to tamper with it, please endeavor that what you obey the traffic regulations. Is that taken? Please study your notes and ensure you prepare for your exams. Is that taken? Good. Bye for now. God bless you. Till we meet again. Thank you.